Caldas. I'm from Finesse Solutions, and our mission in life is to make measurement and control solutions for single-use upstream bioprocessing. So what I'll talk about today are some of the efforts we've made over the last <coughs> three years to bring the plug-and-play philosophy into Delta V, specifically in the context of single-use bioreactors and lab-scale bioreactors. The typical OEM approach, as we've heard already, um, usually involves highly customized PLCs, which lead to higher integration costs, separate user interfaces, which increase the installation and training time, and a lot of manual change control and data transfer, which increases the cost and time of commissioning and validation. So in a desired OEM approach, it would already be based in the Delta V platform to eliminate the above three issues. It would use a common user interface to avoid having to retrain operators irrespective of the type of equipment it was put on. So say you had a seed train with a rocker going into a 250 liter single use bioreactor going into a 1000 liter single use bioreactor then eventually going into a 10,000 liter stainless steel bioreactor you would want that user interface for all those different types of bioreactors to be the same. Reusable standard modules, um, as was mentioned earlier, to, uh, to be able to recycle a lot of the engineering time. Standardized data pipes that are compatible with Delta V, including OPC. Um, universal communication protocols, including Modbus, DeviceNet Fieldbus, Profibus, and an easy way to update and expand despite custom features. So if we look at a typical upstream bioprocess, um, there are many, many potential islands of automation. On the small scale, as Zubin mentioned earlier, there's a variety of vendors, Applicon, B. Brown, for example, which have their own proprietary control systems. Next would be the process development side, which a lot of today is becoming single use. That's on the scale from about 50 liters to 500 liters, followed by the support um, such as mixers and buffer prep, and finally moving into CGMP production at an up to 2,000 liter scale, which is where single-use bioreactors are today. And as I mentioned earlier, you can see the rocker platform moving into a stirred tank platform, which grows, and then in some cases, this is either the end of the process that goes into the purification, or it continues on to a larger scale stainless steel bioreactor. And so there's a lot of different vendors with a lot of different platforms, and in some cases, some of these single-use bioreactors don't even come with a control system. So one of the things that we've tried to do with our True Bio Delta V platform is not just a control system for the single-use bioreactor, but also a SCADA platform that can be overlaid either through OPC or by directly working with some of these other suppliers to do Modbus uh, to uh, serial conversion with their proprietary protocols um, in order to be able to have one user interface for different kinds of equipment. So as you would create your Delta V network into, for example, three different rooms, you could overlay it on your B. Braun equipment in the lab. You could bring in new equipment, which would be a much more sophisticated <coughs> Delta V-based control system where you can also integrate third-party scales such as Sartorius or Mettler scales that are serial other people's pumps, um, the Nova that was mentioned by Zubin earlier through OPC, whether it's an older bioprofile version or the Flex, and where you can then scale it up and carry it through into process development where you would have larger scale single use bioreactors. And then move all of this through uh, common files and data sharing to educate the users of the CGMP process. And so the goal here is easy vessel configuration and process sharing through what we would call vessel configuration files. So you can basically save every Delta V parameter, in fact, 3,400 of them, in an encrypted 21 CFR Part 11 file. And then that can be transferred, as we heard earlier, either through different geographies from one site in, on one continent to another site on another continent um, through the scale up of the vessel and provide the initial scale up parameters as you move from a 10 liter vessel all the way to a 1,000 liter vessel. All the while, piping data into the common historian um, that is based in Delta V, so that all the information from these different aspects of the process are in one common place for easy extraction. And then naturally, the extension to that would be that these solutions would also be CGMP ready, so that as they get tested, 
and used and adapted in the R&D part of the process, there is a way, in fact, to bring them into the CGMP, the manufacturing world, without having to start from scratch and being back to the custom solution. So that, in a way, has been our vision. Um, as we've basically seen it, again, from a vendor perspective, um, the next step to this has now become reconfigurable hardware. So once you have your software system that works on Delta V, somewhat like a macro would work in Excel, um, the next step is basically to be able to have hardware that people can reconfigure on the fly and where, in fact, you can easily change that configuration file in the Delta V system and be up and running. Uh, this is useful for applications such as vaccine manufacturing, where the process can change depending on what part of the flu or pandemic season you're in, um, or in such things as uh, animal vaccines and animal medicine, where different products are made and switched over every month. And what I, oops, what I mean by that is um, if you take a look at the bioreactor, you have your gas flow separate from your liquid flow, separate from your IO, so that you can, in fact, change how these towers and these different bioreactors are organized in your laboratory, both for cost savings, since capital equipment is an important contributor these days, as well as from a space perspective. And this is particularly important uh, in non-greenfield applications, where the users are very space conscious and they're often refurbishing old facilities which have severe space constraints. And last but not least, if we look at this from a vendor perspective,